And away we go. Hey, everybody, it's Jeremy Osterberger with Big Magazine. Today, we are talking to Dave Andrew, Vice President, New Market Development for ExxonMobil Chemical Company. ExxonMobil recently announced that it will build its first large-scale plastic waste advanced recycling facility in Baytown, Texas. Welcome, Dave, and we appreciate you giving Big Magazine some time. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I'm uh, very happy to be here. So, uh, Dave, I understand that currently there is a smaller temporary facility already operational and producing uh, commercial volumes of high quality feedstock using Exxon's proprietary recycling technology. You know, let's talk about that trial. Can you give us a little bit of some details about where that is and maybe how does that technology work for converting uh, plastic waste into raw materials? Sure, I'd love to. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, the, um, let me start off by talking a little bit about the technology and what we're doing. Um, sure. So what we're doing is uh, we're taking plastic waste and we're converting it to, um, to raw materials, to the basic chemical building blocks that can be used in to produce new plastics. So it takes it right back to those chemical building blocks. And that's, um, that's really advantageous because it takes out the contaminants and it essentially restores uh, the raw materials back up to a um, almost the quality of a brand new plastic. So that's the, the, the technology in summary, what we're, what we're doing. Um, we have run um, about a thousand tons of plastic into our facility um, as of uh, the summer. Um, the trial is working well um, and we are converting um, plastic waste from around the, the Houston area into um, into those raw materials. Later this year, we're going to um, actually start uh, marketing what we would call certified circular polymers um, from that trial. And we'll be marking those uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, new products in the market to our customers. So Dave, real quick, that, that feedstock for the plant, where are those Houston-based uh, you know, recycled products? Where are they coming from? So we're running the, uh, the trial has been running at our Baytown uh, facility mm -hmm. um, uh, here in Texas. Um, the plastic uh, waste that we've been running into that trial uh, come from a number of different sources um, in the Texas area. Um, mixed plastic, uh, plastic that would have been difficult to recycle uh, through, let's say, conventional ways. Um, so this, is, this provides a, uh, an opportunity to upgrade those, let's say, low quality plastic waste that uh, wouldn't have been recycled in the base case into, um, into new plastic through our advanced recycling process. Neat, Dave. So are there plans to market the trial product? And if so, you know, who has the need for those types of products? Uh, really, that applies even to the final facility once, once scaled up and built. Yeah, um, we are going to, um, uh, we're talking to a, a number of our customers today, um, our direct customers. Uh, we've been talking to um, a number of the brand owners. Um, there's a, a strong demand, as you know, for, uh, for recycled uh, products, the certified circular products that we're going to produce. Um, so we will start marketing the, uh, the production from the trial. Uh, we're going to continue uh, running the trial uh, through next year. Um, and producing more material. And then uh, towards the end of next year, we will have our permanent facility in place, which will give us a capacity of uh, 30,000 tons per year of, uh, of capacity to, um, to process plastic waste into the raw materials that are used to make plastic products. Cool, Dave. So, so moving past the trial and on to full scale uh, production, you know, at the facility, you know, wh what is the anticipated groundbreaking date of the new advanced recycling facility? Well, right now we're targeting um, fourth quarter of, uh, of next year um, uh, to, to have that facility up and running uh, and producing, um, producing product. Um, but as I said, um, between now and then, we'll continue to operate the trial and continue to, uh, to produce smaller quality, uh, quantities of a product for the customers that we're starting to, to work with and bring online. Dave, is the facility, I guess, entirely, uh, you know, brand new? Is it ground up? Are there some units that were, you know, converted? 
Yeah, it's uh, in fact one of the um, the advantages of the the process that we're we're using here is we're taking advantage of some existing facilities that we already have at mm-hmm. our integrated site. Um, that's that's beneficial from a a cost and an efficiency perspective, but it's also beneficial from a sustainability perspective as well, because of course we don't have to do all, put all of the effort into brand new construction of, of new facilities. So we're, we're trying to be efficient, um, utilize those existing facilities where we can. Uh, there will be some new facilities that we put in in order to, uh, to, to bring in the plastic. Of course, as you can I imagine, we're, we're used to bringing in a, a lot of liquid products, uh, gas products into our facility, um, but bringing in you know, mixed plastic waste, that's a completely new feedstock. So we do have some, uh, some new equipment on the front end to be able to handle that new feedstock. Yeah, and, then, and also some new units are also going to be installed. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So there'll be some new units predominantly to, uh, to get the plastic into the right form so that we can get it into uh, some of our existing uh, processing assets to convert it into those raw materials. Oh, wow. And, and, so, and at the end, at, once this is all built, what is the anticipated uh, volume? So as I was saying, the, for that one site, it's uh, Baytown. Uh, when we started up, about 30,000 tons per year of capacity. So that's how much plastic waste uh, will come in uh, to the front end. Um, but we've got the capability to go significantly above that. So if, um, if the plastic waste feed is available, in the market, um, if the policy is the right um, to support it and the customer demand is there, we can scale that up uh, beyond the 30,000 tons for that first uh, initial startup. Yeah, that feed demand is interesting. I've done a few interviews with refineries that are converting uh, you know, uh, crude feed to maybe waste oil feed or soybean, and they keep saying the same thing. It's about, hey, can we get that, uh, can we get that feedstock volume, right, to, to yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's an interesting point, and it's yeah. it's almost it's difficult to explain to folks um, because there's this perception that there's plastic waste everywhere, and we need to to recycle it. The the challenge that we have um, as a society is there's a lot of plastic waste in the garbage can, but there isn't a lot of plastic waste in the recycling bin that we can take into these facilities. So in order to um, to be successful, I would say quite frankly, as an industry we need to have more and better access to that plastic waste, uh, which means working upstream into that supply chain all the way to the consumers. So the consumers are putting plastic into the right receptacles so it can go down that supply chain and end up in a recycling process. Um, feedstock availability is a big challenge. And, um, and we, in our case, we think it is the rate determining step of how quickly um, we can scale up here. Yeah, interesting, uh, Dave. That 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 idea of other stakeholders that have to be a part of this process continues to be a theme as well. And, and not all plastics are the same, right? Well, and I think exactly. And one of the advantages of bringing in a new technology like this is uh, it provides an incentive up that supply chain to collect more plastic. You know, as it stands today, um, that pull is not there. Right? Because a lot of the plastics um, that are collected today are multi-material. Um, films are difficult to handle in the existing systems. Uh, contamination is a problem. And so by putting in a new technology to do the recycling at the end of the value chain, it allows people to collect a wider range of plastics. Um, so as, as opposed to making that choice like we do every day at the house, do I put it in the garbage can or do I put it in the blue bin? Well, if sure. there's an ability to convert that stuff down the value chain, you can put more into that blue bin. And so that, that's what we want to do. We want to help incentivize that value chain so more can be collected, um, so we can gather more plastic waste, divert it from landfills, divert it from incineration, and pull it into these new advanced recycling facilities. No, that's great, Dave. Thank you for uh, covering that. So who are some of your primary partners, maybe on engineering, procurement, construction services through this process? So if we've, um, as you can imagine, we've got a range of uh, engineering companies that have been working with us to help uh, design the facility. 
a lot of our, our traditional partners that we work with uh, in other projects. Um, uh, that work started um, um, a bit mid this year um, to start doing the detailed engineering work. We, we passed our uh, investment decision uh, timing in, um, in September. Um, and now we're working with the, uh, you know, the typical EPC type companies to, uh, to build out the, the plant. And uh, Dave, is there any information you can give me on like about how much manpower may be required to actually you know, build the facility? Yeah, so the, um, um, this, this first facility um, is quite modest relative to you know, other major petrochemical investments, um, but it's still um, you know, about 50 people uh, have been involved in the trial phase and making sure everything's working um, and then getting the supply chain developed. And as we move into the, um, the construction phase, of course, we'll add in you know, construction contractors and additional people to actually do the build. Okay. And uh, Dave, uh, what I read in the press release a few weeks ago is that Exxon Mobile Chemical is assessing, you know, maybe some other sites, including some along the Gulf Coast. You know, can you share uh, a few of the areas that the company, you know, may be considering in the future that makes sense for possible expansion of these uh, this this uh, you know division of the company really? Yeah, this is actually the exciting part for, for me that's um, being part of this is that it's not just one site, one location, one country. Um, we, we have uh, developed plans to, 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 to launch this um, technology in uh, multiple sites. And so our, our, our ambition is to get to 500,000 tons per year of waste plastic recycled by 2026. So to go more than tenfold as first site over the next uh, five or so years. Um, we'll be doing that um, in the Gulf Coast. Um, so we've, we start off at Baytown. Uh, there's opportunities at other Gulf Coast sites, our integrated sites. Uh, we're looking at Europe. We've also got a, a project underway right now in France with another third party. Um, that project will be um, started up in 2023. And we're also looking at uh, sites in Asia, such as Singapore, to deploy uh, the technology as well. So we've got a, you know, as a, a global manufacturer uh, with a global customer base, um, we want to address this global problem of plastic waste. And um, we're looking to, to scale up that activity as, as quickly as we can. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So, so can you give us some insight into the company's commitment to sustainability and, and lowering, lowering carbon intensity, maybe even outside of Baytown, Dave? Kind of more broad brush question of uh, where we're seeing Exxon head here. Yeah, so over the next six years, um, I think you saw recently that we announced uh, ExxonMobil plans to invest uh, more than $15 billion um, on initiatives uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's a pretty significant uh, investment. Um, it'll be focused on a number of our operating facilities. Um, we're on track to meet our uh, 2025 emissions intensity targets uh, that we published um, a little while ago. As you know, we're heavily involved in um, uh, helping to reduce uh, methane emissions from operations and actively working uh, with agencies on that front. Um, We've also, um, as you probably have seen, are very excited about our um, carbon capture uh, plans for the Houston hub and uh, looking at, um, you know, a uh, well, upwards of $100 billion investments um, that will be required to capture carbon in the Houston area, taking carbon down the ship canal and putting it into sequestration offshore. Um, that's a a mega project will require um, collaboration through a, a number of, of parties, um, but uh, we're looking we're looking to, to to move that along as quickly as we can. Um, uh, very excited about the opportunities that um, our new business unit, which is called Low Carbon Solutions, um, are starting to develop. Strong portfolio of opportunities. I mentioned a few of the ones that we're actively working. Um, uh, and that are in the public domain, but there's more coming. Hey, Dave, look, I know your time is uh, limited and we're just so thankful for you 
jumping on with us. I had a good time uh, talking to you and learning a little bit more about what's going on in Baytown. And really, the low carbon uh, division is really exciting. So, if uh, hey, if there's ever uh, ribbon cutting from the new site in Baytown, we'd love to we'd love to be there. So, let us know if that happens. So. Well, we'll we'll absolutely have you over in uh, right. late next year. We'd love to have you there. We're pretty excited about this plastic uh, recycling. Uh, I, as you can imagine, it's stirred up a lot of passion with our employees. Um, yeah. And so, there's uh, there's a lot of excitement about uh, what's going on at Baytown these days. And Dave, if you want to come back on once you're operational and everything's going well, uh, you're welcome anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. You too, man. Had a great time. So if you're interested in uh, following the progress of the project, visit ExxonMobileChemical.com. Hey, as always, we're most grateful to our audience. Please like and share this recording with colleagues. And for more industry news, videos, webinars, and podcasts, visit BicMagazine.com. Remember, everybody, it's what we do together that counts.